There's no place in the world like Blair Gowrie. The landscape, the pace, and of course, the lights. This is where some of Scotland's finest craftsmanship, art, and coffee can be discovered. A tradition maintained by its locals who have hundreds of years of experience but also one that will forever remain to us full of magic. It's Christmas time of year Our families by the fire Snuggled up like bunnies in the snow It's Christmas the Dome Restaurant, located in Blairgowrie, has been doing its part in keeping the town's craftsmanship, art and coffee tradition alive since its humble beginnings back in 1905, specifically in the hands of the women and men who have worked there often over many generations. And if you get the chance to taste your first ever Christmas coffee with them at their local restaurant, you'll know that it's going to be a special day and a great start to the festive season. And much like the rest of Blairgowrie, they're a typical group of Scots who are quick to laugh and hold a unique place in our minds as some of the best hosts this country has to offer. So, what are your thoughts on supporting local businesses at Christmas time? And what would be your favourite shops to your favourite handful of shops to shop in for Christmas? I think it's really important to support all local businesses. Um, if you support a local business, you're invariably supporting a local family. You know, um, everyone that works here is local and it keeps the money local. Yeah. You know, and I think that's so important. Um, but I think as well, if we don't support our local businesses, we're going to lose them. And, you know, the high street is, is such a fragile thing at the moment. Um, you know, we could easily lose them if we don't use them. Um, and if you actually look around your town, Blegary here, it's pretty much everything you could ever need if you just, you know, go looking for it. Um, and I think if we all work together and if we all support the town, the town can only grow and get stronger and stronger. And sh that's got to be a good thing. And Christmas lights in Blairgowrie, what's your take on them? The lights on the well meadow always be beautiful. I particularly like the little white twinkly ones on all the trees. I think the town centre Christmas lights are absolutely beautiful when they're, when they're on and they're shining. It just adds a nice magical touch to the town. I don't know, I think again it's the time when the community really come together. Um, and you know, people are just a little bit more excited. There's, everyone's got a bit of a spring in their step. Um, and if we're lucky enough to have a white Christmas, then it's just beautiful, just beautiful. And you only have to go a few minutes up the road, you know, 20 minutes up the road and you're in the, the mountains and it's just breathtaking. So yeah, no, I think, I think it really comes alive at Christmas. So why is it important for you guys as the new owners to keep the story of this place alive? So the building has a really um, colourful history. Um, it was, uh, the dome itself started off um, at the back of what we know today, um, onto the Well Meadow, and it was owned by the Vistoki family, an Ita Italian family. Um, and then in the early 1900s, they bought the front and converted it into the cafe as we know it today. So it, it's had some, some changes and it's developed and improved over the years. Um, the Vistoki family had it for decades. Um, and then it was bought by a family called the Chisholm's who owned it for a shorter period of time. Um, it was still operating as a cafe. Um, and then Stuart Wishart and his wife, Jackie, took it over and they ran it for about 25 years. So a lot of people think of it as a Sophie cafe or as a Stuart and Jackie cafe. Um, and then about three or four years ago, it was bought again um, by um, a, a couple, um, Pam and Kevin James, um, and they had it for three years. So it hasn't had many owners and all of the owners have really kept the tradition um, and kept the character and kept that really strong Italian influence in the architecture and the design. And some of the areas downstairs were used as police cells. Um, oh. it's, it's got an amazing history, yeah. The woodwork in the front, um, all of the Italian architecture, that's, that's original. And the columns and the dome through in the back, they were put in in the 1920s. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful old building with tons and tons of history. And I think when you walk in, you feel it. It's, it's very authentic, it's original. And a lot of people, when they walk in, they see it's called the dome, but they don't know why. And when they go through in the back, you hear them go, wow, because it's such a beautiful, unique building. So do you say this place comes down to craftsmanship, 
magic or a mixture of the two? I think it's got to be a mixture of the two. I mean, it's a unique building in terms of the, you know, the architecture, the design, the furniture. Um, but it has such a song, strong sense of community. People have such fond memories of this place, which brings the magic alive, really. Um, we have people coming in, in today who remember coming in with their grandparents or their parents. They used to come in after school for ice cream. Um, so many people in Blair have a, a story to tell about the dome from you know, a long, long time ago. And I think that's part of the magic and the fact that it hasn't really changed over all of those years. It's still the same building. It's still got the same character. It's still got the same atmosphere. Um, and I think that's the magic. And it is so unique in its design as well. There's nowhere else like this place. And it's, you know, it's a real privilege actually to be a part of its history. I think the fact that it's a B-listed building as well just adds to that. I mean, uh, just being able to walk through here and see the dome, um, and you've got people here that have worked for over 25 years. Um, I think it just adds such a magical, unique touch to this place. The girls that work here are just brilliant and they're completely committed to the place. Um, Gillian, who works here, has been here for 25 years. She's seen the place through two or three different owners, um, probably three or four now, actually. Um, and everyone's local, so they all have that sense of, you know, kind of ownership as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's the team that really make the place. The combination of the building and the team is just, just fantastic. And I think that's why people keep coming back. Um, they know they're going to be greeted by a familiar, smiling face. There's a lot, I think there's a lovely, warm, friendly atmosphere in here. Um, and I think that's why people like it, because they know they're, they know they're welcome. And, and they know that we care. And I think that's that's something that was really important to me that we we really sort of built on and that people knew that they were welcome. They knew they were a part of this because this is really part of an ongoing journey. What was the journey that ultimately brought you to this moment right here? So the previous owners decided not to reopen, um, which would have meant the building just stood empty. Um, and that to me was just a tragedy. I spoke to all of the girls and I said, look, if you're not on board, we're not going to do this. And they were like, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which made such a difference. Um, so yeah, we, um, we spent a, you know, a fair amount of time, hours and hours, um, getting the place ready. We've obviously re redecorated it, we've re refurbished it. All the woodwork has been, um, I spent hours on the woodwork, sanding, oiling, sugar soap on all the woodwork. Um, we've had it decorated, we've done quite a lot of work in the kitchen, bringing it up to a slightly more modern level. Um, but in terms of the core infrastructure of the place, um, we wouldn't want to change it. But yeah, no, it was, I never wanted to be the owner of a cafe. It was never my plan. It was never a goal, but it was an opportunity presented itself. And I thought, why not? Why not? I like things that are new and different and challenging. And yes. it's been all of those things. <laughs> all of those things and more. And more. And more. <laughs> I mean, the global pandemic, the hospitality industry is on its knees and I decide to open a coffee shop, yeah. <laughs>actually begin across the river in Rattree. This year the volunteers installed a new and rather magical Christmas tree. Every year a team of local volunteers come together to light up Blair Gowrie. They brave the quickly challenging and various weather as we move from the depths of autumn into the chilly winter to give this town its very own winter solstice light display. The lights are great. It's, it's all done by volunteers, so it's... Um, so it's all done by volunteers? Yeah, so there's a Christmas... I really hope I'm right on this. <laughs> there's a, there's a Chris, um, kind of... There is a Christmas light kind of donation box and that, and it is kind of... Volunteers kind of set it up and everything, and it's... Uh, just The whole town just lights up, really. It's nice. It's just such a nice, cosy atmosphere. Yeah. 
It's, magical uh, or Christmassy? Christmassy. Christmassy? Yeah. No, magical. I'd say it's both. Both. Oh, yeah, right. okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm with you on that yeah. one. I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. Well. yeah. It's okay. a, I don't think there's much in the town that's not lit up. Because, I mean, there's decorations everywhere when it's up. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's good. So when we're shopping in Blegawi for Christmas time, what is some of your favourite shops to, to go into? I'd say it's hard to choose just because there is a lot in there to offer. Mm. I, I think I'd be in trouble if I didn't say my family shop. Okay. Don't come to Mitchell's in the high street there. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, I mean, there, there's everything in there. That's, um, you've, you've got Mitchell's for pretty much everything and anything. You've got Diva's got tons of stuff in there just off the right. high street. You've got Sarah Cave, the Civil Silversmith. You've got the deli. There's tons of stuff in the corner stone. Mm -hmm. Go to Cataran as well while you're um, while you're shopping. Grab a wee coffee while you're out. There's adventure into the books. Adventure into books right there. They've mm -hmm. they've newly opened and I think they're the best bookshop about. It's yeah, um, yeah, yeah. there's there's so much you could get in there. It's, Are you a tea man or coffee man and why? Only I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of tea at all. It's just coffee for myself. But it's um, I mean, a good reason is I can't make silver tea jewelry. So it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's growing up a half, a half kind of half Norwegian family and they're you know one of the biggest coffee drinkers in the world kind of thing it's um whenever we'd visit family in there the pot, like coffee pot's always on so um kind of that kind of that smell of the kind of coffee pot go and um, being on the whole time that's kind of kind of just in, ingrained so it's um just always always really liked it going from that so what about your backstory any humble beginnings how did you become the handmaid by Liam that we know of today so I've always liked working with my hands pretty much. It's um gives you something to kinda of keep you keep you busy. But I I first I'd say my first actual selling kind of crafts kind of job it would be um I did a leather working course and um, there's a man called Hamish in Perth and I did a three day kind of weekend course at his house where he kinda of teaches you how to kind of make stuff and made your own wallet and your belt and that kind of stuff and um after that, I ended up making my own Etsy shop, and that's where I did the Handmade by Liam Berg. And I was originally selling leatherwork, and um, then I kind of wanted to learn just a bit of everything. So then I did, like, say, a day's blacksmithing course, and um, kind of did a few other courses. And me and my partner, we actually both went vegan, so the leatherworking didn't really kind of clash anymore. It was a bit of a contradiction, and I thought I couldn't continue selling my leather while then doing this in my other time so I was like I probably need to find a new craft um, so it took me about a year to find the right craft for me that I kind of I liked doing just because there were stipulations I guess that kind of had to fall in with my lifestyle it had to also be something that I could do inside because if you have to do it outside it gets a wee bit cold in Scotland so you know want to be able to you know do it all the time so then I started doing a silversmithing course in Edinburgh in January um, with a lady called Lisa, Lisa Arnott um, right. from Silver Hub. Mm -hmm. And I'm now on my third block of doing the same course. I've just continued, kind of, never left really. And then, so that's kind of given me the time that I've got my, my, in my partner's flat. I've got my own workbench now. So that way when I'm ever with her, we can also just continue crafting on. And just continue on doing what I'm doing now. So it's just kind of grown from there. There's been a lot of crafts that have been little bits and bobs growing before then. I mean, <laughs> I think I started making arrows out of teaspoons and stuff like when there's a bushcraft magazine and being outdoorsy, they were like, well, make your own arrows because I'd do a bit of archery at the time and trying to make knives and stuff with antler. And so it's, it's just kind of growing. It's, I don't think I'd ever want to not be crafting. So there's obviously so much more that makes you unique than meets the eye. I mean, all of the local folks that I've filmed over this past year, you're one of the very few that has their entire business online. Why? I think it's it's an easy way to start. It's uh, maybe one day I'll get a store, but for now this is perfect for me. It's um, I I think for selling a sell on Etsy and for to put something on that to sell, I think it costs you about 20p per thing. So if you make something, you can say, well, you know what? If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But for 20p, I'll take that chance. And it, so it was a good time for me when I wasn't sure if like what I was doing with it. I'll put it on for sale. 
if I don't sell it, it doesn't matter. But for twenty p, it's worth it, and then it, is, it has been worth it. It's been, it's been great. And at the start, I kind of did it well while I was learning. I as long as I kind of make my money for my materials. Now I'm getting to learn for pretty much for free because my materials are covered from my sales. And so that's why I stuck to online because I wasn't selling enough to continue, say, to afford to make it feasible to kind of have a place. But I think online's been the perfect time to let you grow. So um, especially when now there's a lot of online kind of going on and it's, it's just been kind of right for that. Do you think you'll ever have your own store, like brick and mortar store? Yeah. I mean, do you think that'll happen? I'd love to. And one, one day in the future that, Fingers crossed that will happen. For now, online's perfect for me just because it does give me that chance to kind of, I can travel if I want to. I can kind of, I don't have a set place. I can, um, if I'm visiting, if I'm here in Blair, I can be crafting. If I visit, like, yeah, if I go on holiday for a week, take a toolbox with me and I can still continue on. You're not tied down. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's benefits to having a place. I mean, everyone knows where you are. They can come visit you. Um, but I think right now I'm not there yet. So with your, you're handmade by Liam. Yep. And you are coffee bean culture. Yes. What's the difference? So handmade by Liam Berger is me. Um, all my work that's kind of un, uncurated. Okay. Um, all my work that's just everything I make. Right. But I, I found... With my coffee beans, it felt like that should be its own thing. Um, a goal of mine would be to sell all my coffee bean stuff in coffee shops, say, all over Scotland. Right. So it's uh, going to be a future goal, but it'll get there. That's a very good goal to have. That's it. And yeah. I thought if you go to a coffee shop, say, in Glasgow or Aberdeen or, um, or, or here even there as well, mm -hmm. you might know, if I had that under handmade by Liam Berg, you might not know kind of the name at all so you're not going to have some sort of connection to that but if you saw that as a coffee brand I felt I could market that a little better to say this coffee is coffee related so it, I felt it would sell a little better kind of all over if it was his own name so I'm continuing all my stuff under my name but the yep. coffee stuff as well will be like a sister spin-off to to that what would your advice be to other local businesses, especially local crafts folk, mm -hmm. who maybe are thinking about using 2021 to experiment with going online? What would your what would any advice be from you that you think might have helped them? I'd say there's no better time to kind of get online and kind of to push that. If you're, I feel lockdown made everyone a lot more creative. Um, everyone was stuck inside, and then you find out. I actually really enjoy doing new crafts. You learn a lot of new things. And now's a good time to say, well, I'm actually going to make a business of that. I think we all need to be a little more adapting to work. And being self-employed and doing crafts is the, for me, it was the best thing of, I get to make, maybe I'm not making a full living out of it, but it actually really boosts that extra bit and lets you continue kind of doing what you love. There's more than meets the eye with these guys. Each one excelling in their craft and working as one, day in and day out, with passion and pride to create some of the best experiences this town has to offer. These are the kind of people we love. Counting on traditions with rare skills ingrained in the muscles of their hands. And just like every craftsperson, artist, shopkeeper, farmer and tour guide we've met in Blair Gowry, they're never in it for the money or glory. They just love what they do. These are the individual people who understand culture is born when someone shows up authentically as only they can, leaving their mark on the world while encouraging other people to do the same. And what they do reminds us that together, we are more powerful than we think. It's Christmas, time of year, our families by the fire. Snuggled up like bunnies in the snow 
It's Christmas. Christmas. Little birds are singing like a choir. Winter chill is nipping at your nose. I've been waiting all year for this. Grab your cocoa and reminisce. So oh, how I love when Christmas comes around. The tree and sing along. Watching Hallmark movies all night long. I've been waiting all year for this. Oh, these murders I just can't resist. Oh, how I love when Christmas comes around. 